Hello, this is Adam Gates from Car Subaru in Beaverton, Oregon, doing a video delivery of a package 11 Crosstrek. Here's your key. So you got lock on the top, unlock on the bottom. The trunk button will unlock the trunk, but it won't open it. That's not something they offer on the Crosstreks. One thing I will say is on this soft touch button, when you go to open the car, lift from that button. So you see right there, I got stuck because I kind of went off it there. So you want to make sure that you touch that soft touch button. It's right below the third star from the left and lift up by that button. It's, made, it's built to look like that. It's right there and it's built to work that way. <clears throat> so as we come into the car here, we're going to start from our left and we're going to work our way around. So this is all pretty self-explanatory, but I like to go over it anyway. These are your mirror adjustments. Turn it to the left, use it like a joystick. Turn it to the right, adjust the right mirror, use it like a joystick. Lock, unlock. You've got your auto windows here. Uh, you have auto windows in the front and pass in the driver and passenger, excuse me. Then you have regular windows in the back, and then you got the lock for the kids, the dogs, friends, all that kind of fun stuff. Now on the package 11, you don't have a power seat. This is to tilt the back support. This is how you move the seat up and down. It's like a pneumatic jack. You pick it up if you want to go up and it just goes up by certain intervals. You push it down if you want to go down. And then to adjust the seat forward or back, you've got this right here. So these buttons, you've got your traction control button. There's no reason to ever turn that off. This is your engine auto start stop. When you come to a full stop with this car, if the engine's warm and you put your foot all the way down on the brake, the engine will actually turn off. You can just turn that off by clicking that and the engine will stay on no matter how many times you hit the brake. And I'll show you what indicates that on the dash here once we get the car started. This is to adjust the dimming on your dash lights. Now, if you ever get in your car and you're wondering how much gas you have or um, how many miles you have, there's this trip button right here. You click that and it'll tell you how much fuel is in the car. This one's empty, of course, because it's sitting here on our lot with a whopping four miles, but it will always show you that, even if the keys aren't in the ignition. So I'm gonna get out the keys here. We're gonna start the car. You'll notice on your new Subaru, when you start the cars cold, they sound pretty loud. That's a normal Subaru thing. Uh, the engines don't have the oil drain off the components when you first um, start it they always have um, oil on them, so the engine revs up to warm that oil up as quick as it can. Okay, on the stock here, we'll do it through this. You have auto lights, you can just click it on that. The lights will turn on automatically when the car feels like it needs to. If your car is equipped with fog lights, this is where you would turn those on. Package 11, I do not believe is, I'll check on that. So this is your information display tack. Whenever you start the car, that little blue light will be there telling you the engine's cold so certain features are disabled. So over here we have audio controls, talk to the car, pick up your phone, hang up your phone. Info changes this screen right here. So if I click this button right here, you can see it changes what I'm seeing. So I've got 20 miles to empty. I'm getting 4.9 average miles per gallon. That's your rolling MPGs, tells you uh, how you're doing as you're driving. That's on this trip, we've gotten two average miles to the gallon because we're not going anywhere, but the car's running. And then you can just also have a blank if you like a little cleaner display. You can see right there that plus and minus, that is to adjust your clock. I'll show you how you don't have to worry about that when your phone is connected. The phone will just do it for you. Then down here, you have these two paddles and an I button. So if you pull on either one of these two paddles, and you pull them towards you like this. You're gonna pull one or the other towards you. It changes what you're seeing on the info display. Most people leave it on the miles per hour, but you can scroll through these, see what they are. So we've gone zero miles on this trip. Car's been running for one minute. We don't have any rolling MPGs and 20 miles to empty because the car's not going anywhere, but it's running. We're getting 4.8 average miles per gallon so far. Now this is to get into the car's internal systems. If you have any questions about how to adjust those things, please let your dealership know. The, you can get in here and really make life hectic for yourself if you're not careful. Rolling PSI gauge, all package 11s come with um, uh, tire pressure monitoring systems and they don't turn on until you've rolled about a half a mile so the car has accurate readings. That's how long the auto start stop's been engaged, and then on the bottom is how much fuel you saved while auto start stop has been engaged. 
and then back to MPGs. Now you see this little amber eye here. If you want to know what that is, you pull this middle amber, this middle eye button, and when I pull that, it tells me, hey, you've got low fuel. It'll do things like low tire pressure, or if there's a minor problem with the car, if there's a big problem with the car, or somebody doesn't have their seatbelt on in the car, that eye will be red. Now you see the auto start stop feature there it says it's disabled because the car is in parked and it just warmed up. If I want to turn that feature off, I'm going to click this button and you'll see that turn amber. Now when it turns amber, anything on this display that turns amber in the dash means you chose to turn that feature off. Anything that's white says it's on but it's not currently active. And then if it goes green, that means it's currently active. That would be things like your lane departure or your lane keep assist and your adaptive cruise control would turn green. Okay. So over here we have all of our eyesight system stuff. I'm going to go over that in pretty good detail. Eyesight are these two cameras on either side of the rear view mirror. The best way to keep those in good condition is pretend like they're not there. Don't touch them, don't clean them, don't do anything. If you are going to clean this car, spray the rag, then wipe down the car. Don't spray the cleaner in the car. It can gum up the system. Okay. So you see what I'm seeing here now. Now if I go to turn on the adaptive cruise feature, I click that and you'll see this change and you see this little car here. If I put my foot on the brake and take it off, that shows that's me. That's, that's what it's showing you. Now in adaptive cruise, these two cameras see the car in front of you. And the way they tell you that is right at the top of these horizontal white lines, there'll be another little indicator of a car right here saying, okay, I see the car, I'm reacting to that car's speed. Adaptive cruise means you don't have to hit the brakes or hit the gas with the cars in front of you. It adapts to the speed of traffic in front of you. Now you can see you set the miles per hour just like you would on any cruise control system with this right here, set, reset. It'll say what miles per hour you hit the cruise and set it at, and you'll see this plus and minus here. If you click it up, it goes up by five mile an hour increments. If you click it down, it goes down by five mile an hour increments. This is your max cruising speed if there's nobody in front of you. If there's a car in front of you, the car will not accelerate up to that car. It will just stay at a safe distance following. Now you set the distance. You see these horizontal white bars? That sets the following distance, okay? So the more white bars, the further away you stay from the car in front of you, the fewer white bars, and you adjust those here. Okay, so if I push this down, you can see I start taking the bars away. Okay, if I push it up, the bars show up more, okay? So now when you adjust those, the car will stay closer to the car in front of it. It'll brake a little harder. It'll accelerate a little faster to stay closer to the car in front of it. The more bars you have, the sooner it brakes, the slower it accelerates. Now, even if I have it set at one bar and you're doing 45, 50 up to highway speeds, miles per hour, the car will still fall back to a safe following distance to give you plenty of time to react in the car. God forbid it has to do an emergency brake, give, you, give itself plenty of time to react. Okay. So we've got the cruise on, set the speed. Now, if you want to turn off the cruise control feature, it's just like normal cruise. You just hit the brake and it's off. Okay. Then we have this one. This is lane keep assist. So if I click that, you're gonna see the vertical bars on either side right here turn blue. There we go. And you see that now it says that feature's on. So now what the system's doing is looking for lane markings of the lane you wanna be in. This is very, very useful for long road trips. What it does is these bars turn white when it sees the lane markings you're looking for and it'll try to help keep you in that lane. It kind of bounces from lane marking to lane marking if you start to drift a little bit, okay? So if I turn all that off, it goes back to our zero miles per hour, okay? Then you've got your sport and intelligent buttons here. Intelligent is what the car is naturally in. That is where you get the best fuel economy, but it does cut down on the reactiveness of the transmission and gives you a little less power. If I click the S, you see you get a little yellow hill there. That says that the car is going to react a little faster, hold on to revs a little more, give you a little more power. Really useful for when you're going up and over the mountains. It makes your ride a little smoother. Okay, if I want to go back into Intelligent, where you get the best gas mileage, I just click that and you'll see a blue hill come up. And there you go. All righty. So you have your wiper adjustments here. You have up for mist. You've got three levels. You pull down to adjust those. 
And then if you want to change how much time is in between each swipe, you know, you got a longer time down to a shorter time. That's with this little collar. So you can adjust those within each speed level, depending on what kind of rain there is. And of course we're in the Northwest, so you will get plenty of rain. Then you have your rear, I'm gonna use the mirror here. You've got your rear wiper. So if I turn that, if I turn this handle backwards, that's to kick on the sprayers and you can see it spraying there. Or if I have this on all the time, you know, I actually turned it on just like a regular wiper so I could see out the back window, you can also turn it forward. And that also sprays, but then it keeps the wiper on. Okay. Your audio system set up very well. If you ever get lost in this system, you can just hit home and it takes you back to the main system, okay? If you wanna hook up your phone, you click phone. Then it'll ask you, do you wanna connect a device? Yes, you'll go into your phone's Bluetooth settings and you're gonna be looking for Subaru BT. You hit pair and then it'll walk you through those systems, okay? Yet again, I'm gonna go home because need to see everything. Apps you don't really have to worry about. It's just telling you what apps are available. The biggest ones are gonna be Android Auto and CarPlay. Uh, if you want to use those, you're going to use your phone cord that you would normally use to charge it, a USB cord. Down here in front of the shifter in this little cubby hole, sorry, trying to get this in here for you, you see those two USB ports there. You can plug either an iPhone or an Android. If you have an Android, you need to install the Android Auto app. It's free. I run it on this phone and I love it. So when you plug that in, right down here, CarPlay or Android Auto will pop up, and then you click that. It changes the phone system to where you're mirroring the screen, uh, your phone screen on this screen. So like your maps, if you use Google, Waze, Apple Maps, those will all pop up right here. One of the really nice things is when you click this button to talk to the car and you have Android or Apple CarPlay enabled, you talk to Siri or the Google Assistant. Very, very smooth, very, very nice to use, okay? Your volume controls are right here. And you have your tuning there. Now, if I want to set a radio channel, I click radio. We're on 95.5. You have 18 presets in this car. Now, this screen is touch as well as these buttons here if you don't like using a touch screen. So if I scroll back to one, if I want to set a radio station, you hold that down. And there you go. It's set in there. Now you can also switch between brand, between bands, you know, FM, AM, Sirius, and Bluetooth. You can also do that from source right here. So if I click source, it goes to AM, Sirius, and then it might scroll through Bluetooth. Nope, no phone's hooked up, so it won't scroll through Bluetooth. But it'll also scroll through Bluetooth, excuse me. Now, if I want to just click on Bluetooth or I'm hooking up a passenger's phone and they want to stream something from their phones, you go to media and then it'll tell you what media device you're streaming from. Okay, so then you got your HVAC system down here. You've got your fan speed right here. AC, this is your flashers, kind of an odd spot for your flashers, but that's how things will, that's how the car will work there. So you've got auto climate control. When I turn that on, that actually displays on the info screen. Turn it up to get warmer, down to get colder, okay? Fan speed, again, shows there. Now, one thing that's a little different on Subarus is the mode switch. So if I turn that, if you look on the very right there, it shows where the air is actually blowing out at. You've got multiple settings for whatever direction you want the air to blow out at you. Okay. Then if I click mode, that's my defrost, my front defrost. And then you'll see here, you've got your, oop, you turn that down, it's a little loud. Then if I click here, you've got your rear defrost and this little guy on the side. Package 11s in Crosstrex, the premiums, have the all-weather package, meaning you have defogging side mirrors as well as heated seats and a heating element in the windshield. If I click that, the rear defrost comes on along with my side mirrors. So watch that. Those will, will get a little warm, but it's a really nice feature in those cold winters. Speaking of the heated seats, that control is right here on the dash, right down from the shifter. You've got well done and rare, and then you just put it in the middle if you want to turn them off. X mode is an off-road feature, this button right here. So if I click that, you're gonna see the car tell me it went into X mode. Now this is a software mode that only lets you do 18 miles per hour. It's for off-roading, camping, or really, really slick streets, but going very slow. It changes the software so that the 
traction control system kind of goes into overdrive. Okay, and you also see this guy, this little green downhill indicator. The idea being that if you want to go downhill in this car, instead of holding on to the brakes and the car, you know, sliding possibly, you just kind of point it where you want to go. The car will naturally brake itself. The system will brake and keep you at under 12 miles an hour and just kind of crawl you down the hill. It's a really, really nice feature. To turn it off, you just click the button again and it's off. All right, as far as your shifter goes, park, reverse, neutral, drive, and then manual. If I put the car in drive, you can see it tells me it's in drive. You have these two paddles back here, plus and minus on the left. The car is a CVT. It's a continuously variable transmission. It doesn't actually have gears, but if you want to engine brake in slick conditions or you want a little more power when you're on the freeway, you can click this down at any point in the drive and it'll switch gears quick, but it will not, um, it'll, should say rev, change revs. It will not hold that gear. If you'd like it to hold the gear, you can actually push the car over into manual. And you see now where that D was, there's a one. I'm gonna show you that again so you can see it in real time. So now it's telling you what gearing you're in. If I click this button, this paddle, it goes up to two. Okay, and that's all it'll do while it's sitting still, but you have up to seven virtual gears. And when it's in manual mode, it'll actually hold those gears in place. Something you're not gonna use very much, but it's nice to know. Oops, put the car in park there. Good thing there was nobody in front of me. Eyesight would've stopped me anyway. So speaking of EyeSight's other features, it also has lane departure warning and pre-collision braking. Now lane departure warning is a little different than lane keep assist. Lane keep assist actually puts feedback into the wheel, okay? Lane departure warning just tells you if you go over the lane markings without using your blinker. Then you have pre-collision braking. Now pre-collision braking is pretty self-explanatory. The car will actually try to stop you if you don't see a car in front of you or a pedestrian. It'll beep at you, go beep, 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 beep. This will turn red and flash like two cars in front of you saying, hey, you need to hit the brakes. Now if you hit the brakes while it's beeping and you've got plenty of time to stop, the system just shuts off. It doesn't override you. If you hit the brakes and it keeps beeping, that's called driver assisted braking where it's saying, ooh, you're not applying enough brake pressure. It's doing the math of how fast you're closing and it's saying you could still hit so it applies more brake for you to make sure that doesn't happen. At under 30 miles an hour in good road conditions, like today, pavement's dry, no ice, no snow, you will not hit a car in front of you at under 30 miles an hour. Cars can stop extremely efficiently when the system kicks in. At over 30 miles an hour, it's gonna greatly reduce your impact speed, but there's no guarantee that you can't, um, that you won't be in, an, in a collision. But with all the safety systems and Subarus, it's extremely unlikely. And if you do, God forbid, get in a collision, you will be okay. That's why I sell them, they're the safest cars on the road. Now, these buttons are here so you can turn off these features if you like. Now, yet again, if I hold this down, you're gonna see it pop up by the tack. There you go, by the zero there, it says that feature is off. Again, in amber, it says it's off. Now, you can adjust these as quick as I hit this button. So if I hold the button down again, it turns itself back off. So that's saying it's on now because it's not telling you it's off. Now, the pre-collision braking, there is a reason to turn that off. If you ever go through a car wash, and they have brushes that come down in front of the windshield, the system can see that and say, yeah, I don't like that, and it's gonna stop because it thinks it's gonna hit. So you wanna turn that off when you go through car washes. Yet again, you're just holding down that button, waiting until you see the off indicator on the tachometer, and then you're good to go. When you get out, hold the button down, it turns right back on, it goes as quick as that. Okay, so I mentioned earlier in the video that I was gonna explain how to set the car up so that you don't have to worry about daylight savings or going through different time zones, the car will just know where you're at. So you go to settings, you go to vehicle, you go to time date. When you have a phone hooked up on Bluetooth, if you click time date and go to, oh good Lord Adam, click time date and go to auto, which it doesn't give me that option now because I don't have a phone hooked up, if you click auto, it'll just sync with the phone every time the phone hooks up to Bluetooth, so you always have the right time and date. All righty. So one thing I like to show everybody on Subarus, the headrests are kind of funny. If you tilt the headrest, they lock into place. Okay, but if you tilt it too far and you want to tilt it back a little bit, you have to pull it all the way down, let it click back, and then start over again. 
Just a feature that's kind of an oddity in Subarus. All right, if I come back over here, I want to show you how to lower the rear seats. It's this little indicator right here, okay? So I just pull up and lower the seat down. If you put it back up and you see this red here, that means the seat's not locked in place. So you have something heavy in the back that you hit the brakes and it rolls forward. You don't want that to happen. So make sure when you click them, you're going to kind of pop it in there, especially when it's new. They take a little bit to get broken in and that red's gone. So you know it's locked in there. So that's just a quick overview of some of the features of the car. Please call your retailer or myself if I'm the one sending you this video. If you have any questions, I will be happy to answer them for you. You guys have a great day and stay safe.